So this is my contribution tonight. I'm already half drunk. Um, <laughs> who wants a coconut? Who's willing to work for their coconut? Okay, buddy. <laughs> okay. Feel free to come up. Uh, we are going to build essentially a wireless network here tonight in this space. So you've all seen these routers, little boxes that got antennas on the back of it. We are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is our little wireless network. We've got Robin over here, who is our switch. How many people here have used a wireless network at home where they've exchanged files? You've shared music from one machine to another, moved movies from one machine to another, stuff like that. So when we look at it, we're going to look at our packets, or our information. <laughs> That's why it works to sit in the front of your room. There's one for you. Eight more, that's one for you. Miss, okay. And a score. The score I really is the, like score. What you have in your hand is the data file or the packet, which is what we're going to be trying to pass around on this network here. How many of us have had that experience with internet support or with tech support where they're like, I need you to start up your command prompt, and I need you to bring up your IP config. And it spits out all this gobbledygook with your IP address and your MAC address and your domain and all this crap. But what does all of this mean? We're only talking about a home wireless network here tonight. We're only talking about transferring packets within one little network, just from the computer upstairs and the computer downstairs, or my computer and the girlfriend's computer, something like that. We're not talking about going out on the internet. Now, all this information that comes up in these little screens when you type in all this thing and all this gobbledygook comes out is basically distilled down into two very, very important things. You have your MAC address and your IP address. Consider for right now that it's like a phone number versus the phone wires that come into your house. You have your phone number. Mine's 403-891-XXXX, right? I can take that phone number from my home, and if I move somewhere else in Calgary, I can have that phone number brought with me. That's like your IP address. Your IP address kind of changes from place to place wherever you can go. It's malleable, you can move it around. What doesn't change though is the physical wires that came into my house. Somewhere at Telus, they have a, a little chart that lists what pair of phone wires are attached to this, uh, this IP address or this phone number. So we have our phone number and we have the physical pairs. If we move outside of Calgary, we can't use that same I, we can't use that phone number anymore, right? That phone number is no longer good. We have to get somebody some uh, a phone number from somebody there, and we're on way, way, way different pairs. So to translate that into what's going on here tonight, the chairs that you're sitting on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven are the wires. Okay, so that's your MAC address for the technical people here. You all have names. So your names are kind of like your phone numbers. So your chair is like your wires, but your name is your, is your phone number. Like right now we could get you two to stand up and switch spot. You would still have the same name, but the chairs that you're on, that would still be chair two, and that would still be chair three. Everybody in the front two rows, take a piece of your can you pass those out? Yep. That's what I'll use you for. <laughs> Thanks for all that. You're welcome. Can you pass a pen to everyone? Yep. Okay. Yeah, so now you have a little fan. Yeah. You're going to have to record some data down if you're going to want to be able to exchange those chocolate bars to the people that you want to get them to. When you hear somebody say the name and the seat number, everybody here, as if we were Windows XP machines, the technical people in the crowd know that not every machine will do this. And maybe they shouldn't, but Windows XP machines are, or Windows machines are trying to be nice. And they will write down any pairing that they hear. So the important thing that you have to remember is the chair number, right, and the name. So we have Justin, who's in seat one, and what do you have? Uh, o. Henry. Who wants the O. Henry? You'd like an O. Henry. This is perfect. Okay. So now, so we're the wireless network, and we're gonna we're gonna try to exchange a packet. So we have Allison. Sorry, what's your name? Allison. Allison. Because <laughs> I don't know any of you. None of these are plants. And um, <laughs> and what seat are you in? Two. You're in seat two. And you want the O. Henry. Okay. Yes. So the idea is that whenever we exchange packets tonight, we're gonna we're gonna pass packets through the switch. That's what we're gonna do here. Okay. <laughs> When you, as your computer at home, wants to get a packet from another computer, you know, you know the name of the computer. You like type in uh, like the address. You type in the IP address or the name of the machine. When that happens, your computer goes onto, the, onto this wireless segment, this wireless air here, and it stands up and it says, I need to find Justin. What chair is Justin at? Justin! <laughs> no, sorry. I need to find Justin. What chair is Justin at? I need to find Justin. Where is Justin at? You would say, I'm Justin. I'm in chair one. On your piece of paper right now, you would say Justin one. This is your MAC address table. Every computer, every piece of networking gear maintains one of these little tables where they write down this type of information, okay? Some operating systems will be friendly. They'll be like, oh, if I hear this, if I hear somebody say out loud in the wireless network, some other pairing, maybe I'll write it down too. So everybody else, we now have heard that Justin is at chair one. 
So write on your ARP table, that's what it's called, your ARP table, Justin won. <laughs> Just tell him who and what share are you giving this to? Justin, share number one. Hey, yo, Justin, back. incoming packet. Right. <laughs> exactly. Do you know where Allison is no, sitting? I don't. So what do you have to do? I'm looking for Allison. What chair? What chair is you? And then you would stand up and you would say... I'm Allison, I'm in chair two. So everybody else on your table <laughs> would write down Allison two. Now that you know, then you can do the pass. Incoming packet. Right. We can simulate heavy traffic to this machine. Everybody... Look at your tables right now. Who do you know? Justin you know Justin and Allison. So all, at one time, I want all seven of you to try and exchange your chocolate bar with either Justin and Allison. <laughs> do it. Do it. Come on. <laughs> the switch can't handle it. The switch can't handle it. The switch gets a little, like, you know, messed up with all these packets that are coming at it. So let's... <laughs> So, redistribute them out so that everybody's got one. Does anybody want to get a different chocolate bar from somebody else? Yeah. Take a look around. Yes. Okay, let's, let's start here. And uh, what would you like to get? You'd like to get the score. Okay. <laughs> I like Reese. And you like Reese? Okay. Now, unfortunately, you can't do this. You gotta go through our switch over here. So, what is the first step? You have to find out where that is. I need to know where April is. What chair is April in? And then, April, you would say? I'm April. I'm in chair three. So everybody that's on the wireless network at this point would right now write down April 3. So we're building out our ARP table. So you would now be able to transfer a packet to her. April, chair three. Right. Here you go, chair three. There we go. <laughs> now, before you can transmit back to her, what do you have to do? We have to find out what chair she's in. You need in. to know what chair she's in. I need to know what chair Tessa is in. I'm Tessa, I'm in chair four. So everybody would add to their ARP table. Tessa at chair for the package and switch. So this is the basic operation of how your home network works. Like I've said before, this isn't going out to the internet or anything like that. This is just how we get packets around on the local area network. Now, for the people in the room that are a little bit security minded, can anybody think about an issue or how we could maybe corrupt this style of system that we've just done here? I'm Tessa. <laughs> He's absolutely right. At any point, at any point did any of these machines, especially the machines in the second row, that we're adding into their ARP table. Did anybody here ask for ID? <laughs> Nobody asked for ID. And on top of that, people just wrote into their table willingly. Before we continue on, we have, we have ARP entries for one, two, three, and four. Can we just complete this? Can we just have you guys real quick complete this off? Are you get up your broadcast? Can we start this out? So right now, we have what we would call a complete ARP table. Everybody knows the chair that every person's sitting in. Nobody asked for ID, and uh, some implementations of this protocol, or how some computers work, or how some operating systems work, are very trusting. They're just going to hear this, and they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna put this into the table. The important thing to know is that our switch over here, Robin, Yes. all he knows how to do is to send to the chairs. He doesn't care about your names. All he cares about your chairs. So all he cares about is ARP that we were talking about, or the MAC address, right? He doesn't care about your internet address or anything like that. That's a little bit bigger, that's on the internet, or that's, you know, these higher level protocols. In the end, in terms of just getting packets around, all Robin cares about are what chairs that you're in. So we're going to simulate uh, three types of attacks that are going to happen here right now. I'm Allison, and I'm in chair eight. I'm Allison, and I'm in chair eight. So what do you guys do to your tables? Update. You update your table. So I'm Cherry over here. Gotcha. You got me wrong? Gotcha, Cherry. Same page. Somebody try to exchange a chocolate bar with Allison right now. He's in two Cherry. He's in a Cherry. Let's go, Cherry. She still got the packet. She still got the chocolate bar. However, at one point, this malicious entity, maybe, <laughs> had that chocolate bar, but still passed it on. Still passed the packet on. I'm, I'm Eve at this point. I'm an eavesdropper. All I've done is that I had that packet, and I could read it, and I can look into it, and I could see what was inside that packet, but then I still passed it on. Here, let's send that back. 
Okay, this is what's called a man in the middle attack, is what I've just done here. I ARP poisoned the segment. I walked onto your wireless network because you weren't using WPA2, you were still using WEP because you had a game console that didn't support WPA2. I was able to break into your home network and now I'm listening to every conversation that you have between these two chairs. Because I'm Allison at chair eight. I still know that Allison, however, is back at chair two, so I'll send that packet back on over. So you don't know that this is going on. I'm uh, sorry, miss your name again? April. April, okay. I said miss and Dave responded? No, you pointed that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Chair seven. <laughs> nice job, Switch. <laughs> what do you want to change that chocolate bar for? Uh, score bar. Who's got a score? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, you can all swap them when we're all done. Okay. So Dave and Tessa, you guys want to complete a transaction right now, so make that happen. No, 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 what do you do? Play along with me. What do you say? Tessa, chair four. Uh, here you go, chair four. I'm Dave in chair eight. Her table says that Dave's at Chair 8. So, what happens? But so is Allison. I've overwritten that now. The newest update always uh, overwrites the last one. You can have two names at the same chair. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't bust my balls, dude. So oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> she's, 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 seriously. <laughs> no one said oh, Allison was okay, back at Chair um, 2. Chair 8. Dave at Chair 8. Yeah. Let's go, Chair 8. Oh my god, what's he do? Oh, oh Jesus! Oh no, wait, he stole the score. So essentially what's just happened here, this is another form of a man in the middle attack. Show the people what you got. <laughs> so this style of man in the middle attack, this is committed by Mallory. This is not an eaves, uh, Eve or the eavesdropper anymore. This is a malicious attacker. And this malicious attacker has decided to change the contents of the packet that's been passed through. So it came to me, I read it, I decided, eh, let's fuck with them a little bit. And then I passed it back to him with something that was different in it. And you did not get what you were expecting at all, did you? They're not that different from all Henry's. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the third style attack is gonna work out like this. Um, everybody, <coughs> pick somebody in your list that you're gonna send that chocolate bar to. So you've all got this in your head. And now before any of these packets are transmitted, I, as the malicious intruder, I'd end up on this wireless network again. And I'm gonna turn to all of you and I'm gonna say, Justin is in chair eight. Allison is in chair eight, right? Uh-oh. April is in chair eight. Tessa is in chair eight. I'm still a malicious intruder on this network, but what I've just done is I've poisoned your entire ARP table. I've come onto the network and said that I am everybody. I am everybody. So right now, if you guys wanted to try and send a packet to anybody else, feel free to try and do it through your router. But what do you have to say? You have to remember, you have to tell them what chair that they're at, right? Josh, chair five. Ah, but is Josh at chair five now? Josh I, is I, at I, chair eight. True. Josh is at chair eight. <laughs> so I get it. Josh is at chair eight. That's right. And I get it. Tessa at chair eight. That's right. I thought you were so generous buying all those chocolate bars. Now I'm not so sure. <laughs> Here's the thing. If you guys are trying to get that to go to everyone, I could still turn around and give this to everyone. Or, I could go into my little bag and I could grab all of the little shitty chocolate bars <laughs> and give everybody a shitty little chocolate bar. Or, I could take all this information, uh, embargo it, and do whatever I want with it. This is all the type of stuff that can happen on your home network. If you live next door? If you're using web. Let's put it like that. This is if you have a malicious intruder on your network. The main point that I want to stress here is that things like this is, you know, we hear about like in the media or on the news that they're, oh my God, there's this huge bug. There's this huge bug in office. If you accept this attachment, something bad is going to happen. Or there's this huge bug in the way DNS works. Oh my God, if you do this, something bad is going to happen. These are what, are, these are exploits. This is when there's something broken or something can be broken in the software. That's not what we did here tonight, okay? What we did here tonight is about the protocol and the way the protocol is Im implemented. These are the rules that we all agree by on this network segment. We all agree that, well, at least Windows machines do and some other machines, agree that if I hear a MAC address being called out on the wire, being broadcast on the wire, I'm going to write it down. That's why these style of, t of attacks work. And uh, this style of, uh, of talk is what we want to do on other nights opposed to the heavy technical nights. We aren't just going to do hardcore tech talks. We're not just going to do hardcore science talks. We also want to be able to extend to the community the ability to do like a little educational night 
where maybe we can bring in mom and dad and like install Linux on our computers or talk about a home network works or talk about how the internet works or anything like that. That's what we want to do in this space. There is the educational outreach arm of what Protospace wants to do. And I want to thank everybody who is here tonight for being a part of that, especially please everybody thank our first two rows, our rounds. <laughs> I believe we've got Int80 is going to be doing a little bit of a talk about how Metasploit works. He's going to tell you how to break hosts, the, attack the actual computer. This is where we're going to move into the extremely technical side of the track. If you're interested in software it's not development, that pardon? It's not that technical. It's more technical than what I just did. 